Okay, today's lesson will be about wave transmission. Uh, so what happens as any particular wave, whether it be water wave, sound wave, uh, a pulsed wave in a string or a spring, or even a light wave interacts with uh, certain mediums and what happens when, when they do that. So I'm gonna be using a bunch of animations and a few YouTube videos in this presentation. Uh, I realize that you're going to be watching this on YouTube and therefore you're going to have some nested YouTube links and it's just the way it's going to have to be. Um, so I'm going to be using the website uh, <clears throat> uh, org. Uh, it's a fellow from India who made a bunch of animations for physics uh, courses and they're quite good. So we're going to use that. Um, so transmission, anytime I say transmission, I'm just referring to a wave propagating forward through space. Uh, when I say space, I probably just mean in, in a medium. Um, light doesn't need a medium to propagate and transmit, uh, but for the most part, we're talking about other types of waves. So mechanical waves, things like uh, a wave you'd see at the lake would require the water to travel. Sound waves require air to propagate. They can propagate through other mediums as well, but you recognize sound waves as it propagates through air. Uh, so if you had a, a rope and you gave it a quick little uh, jerk to one side, you create a wave in the uh, rope material. So it's just how they propagate through. Um, <clears throat> so once in a while they may interact with some kind of a boundary, whether you have say two different ropes tied together or uh, in the case of an ultrasound when you're using sound waves to see what's going on inside of the body. There's lots of different layers of in the body. So you have your skin, your, your, your fat tissues, your muscle tissues, and a bunch of other liquids inside. And so sound's going to travel through all those different boundaries and it's going to have different interactions as it goes through every single one of those different boundaries. So we need to have an understanding of what happens to waves when they interact between boundaries or when they uh, collide with different mediums. So before I go any further, I need to really point out that when waves travel in a uniform medium, so that means the medium doesn't change, uh, its density remains the same, uh, the speed of the wave itself should always maintain a constant rate. So they, the wave wouldn't speed up, the wave wouldn't slow down, uh, water waves are a bit, bit misleading. Uh, you can have water waves change their speed, but that's due to the changing depths of, of lakes and oceans and rivers. So that's a little bit misleading because in that sense, uh, when you're out of the water, it looks like it's all a constant medium. But obviously, if you get into the water, you can see that the depth changes, and that change in depth will therefore make it a uh, non-uniform medium. So. As long as everything remains constant in the medium itself, then the speed of the wave should always remain the same. So now that I've said all that, let's just go to, uh, so this is what you'd see if you go to Surrender Ath's webpage. So all the animations are found just by the top left-hand corner, and we're gonna go into wave motion. I see wave is kind of cut off there, and so the first one is transverse waves. I've got that tab open already. So your basic transverse wave gives you the crest and the trough. I have the amplitude set at three A's. So the A is just some random value for amplitude. Two A would be uh, uh, one third the size, I guess. Um, I guess it would be two thirds, anyways. So if I start this off, I have a low frequency propagating wave as it travels from left to right. It's a nice animation. So the speed is not going to change whatsoever. If I stop it right there and maybe move it back just a little bit, we can see that this wave, when I have a low frequency wave, can fit one complete wavelength inside of the screen. So when I have low frequency, I tend to have a large wave. So one complete crest, one complete trough, that would be a definition of a wavelength. Of course, there's other definitions where you can talk about the measurement from the top of one crest to the uh, top of the next crest, or likewise with troughs, which I won't put on there. Uh, that would be a wave, the weight length of a wave. So if I change my frequency and increase it, so an increased frequency, 
as you can see, when my frequency is increased, it looks like it has doubled in size, but an increased rate of frequency means I'm having more waves made every second. And when I have more waves being made every second, my wavelength gets shorter. So frequency and wavelength tend to have a, a reciprocal relationship. If your frequency increases, your wavelength decreases. If your wavelength decreases, your frequency would have to increase. So you can't change one without affecting the other. And they would just propagate through space at the exact same speed. It looks like it's going a little bit faster, but since the wavelengths are a lot shorter, uh, it's going through the amplitude up and the amplitude down. Uh, that is happening a lot quicker because more waves are passing through the screen. But the rate at which it's going from left to right doesn't change. It's still going to be the same rate going left to right. right? It just You might see the amplitude change a little bit slower because you have fewer waves being made. So sometimes that's a little bit misleading uh, as it propagates through space. So that's just your basic uh, wave transmission, uh, which I have to basically talk about a quick little math equation at the moment, the relationship. Uh, you'll see this universal wave equation in a different lesson where we'll go over some math examples. But for now, just be aware that when your medium is constant, you're gonna have a constant speed, and that's what V is representing, the velocity or speed, whichever one you want to use. Uh, the wavelength multiplied by the frequency will give you your speed. So if in the case of that animation, uh, if I increase the frequency, more waves are being made every second. So if the speed is to remain constant, the wavelength has to decrease. So if that little animation showed that the frequency doubled, so I was able to fit two waves in one screen, so that means the wavelength was cut in half. So if this increases by a factor of two, this is gonna to have to decrease by a factor of two. Likewise, if I decrease the frequency, my wavelength would also increase. So wavelength and frequency are grouped together when the medium is constant. Uh, you cannot change one without affecting the other. So that's just your very basic waveform transmission. So what happens when it gets to the end of the boundary and starts to interact with another medium, you're gonna end up with reflection. You played around with reflection, I believe in grade eight, when you first learned about uh, light and optics and uh, uh, convex and concave mirrors. Uh, that was a while ago, so maybe you don't remember. Uh, so we'll take it step by step. So the very basic idea for reflection is, uh, think of a bounce. So if you drop a basketball, it bounces on the ground and comes back up in the air. Uh, that is a reflection, it reflects off the ground. We just call it bouncing because, you know, that's a bit easier for our head to uh, wrap it around. So if I go back to this animation and go to the reflection and transmission, so I have a wave, well, a pulse, so it's just gonna be a crest, just so we, it's a, it's a half a wave, uh, just so there's no confusion. We just could have a crest going to the right, I have it paused at the moment. So if I start it up, it's gonna to go to the right, I'm just gonna pause it again. So this is the end of my medium. So this little rope here or slinky or string, whatever that is, whatever this medium is, could be water, doesn't matter what this is at the moment. When the wave or pulse, the crest, gets to this point right here, this point is fixed. It cannot move. And so whenever a waveform interacts with the end of a boundary where the boundary is fixed and held tight, so if this was skip rope, so you and your friends playing skip rope, if someone over here made a pulse and traveled over here and the person over here was holding it steady so that the rope couldn't move, this is what you would observe. The crest would reflect as a trough. So the amplitude inverts. The speed doesn't change, right? Initially, it's going to the right across the screen at a certain speed. You can time it with your watch if you want. Uh, and the speed going left after the reflection should remain the same. In a perfect world, there'll be no energy lost. But uh, unfortunately, there's air and there's also thermodynamics. So uh, odds are good. It's going to lose some energy as it propagates to the right but we're gonna assume this is perfect fundamental physics, so no energy is lost, so therefore the wavelength itself doesn't change. It's going to be the same thickness, right? From this point right here to this point right here shouldn't actually change. It's the same width. 
right? And the amplitude itself, so if I assign it a random value of say two units, if it was two units as a crest going up, now that it reflects as a trough, it'll be two units going down. So the amplitude, uh, shouldn't change in magnitude. It'll change in orientation, but not in magnitude. So I'll let this go one or two more times. I'll put the components on, so now it's white. Uh, white will be the original wave, and you'll see what's happening as it reflects. So the yellow is the simultaneous two waves interacting. So as it starts to, the front of the wave has now just passed through that boundary. It has already inverted. And so this point right here, the total of the original wave in the white and the reflected wave in the red, because that's what's coming back as a trough, um, this amplitude going up should be equal to that amplitude going down. And so that'll actually uh, cancel itself out a little bit. Uh, and then eventually the wave will uh, reform. So yellow is what is you see in real time. White was the initial wave. Red is your reflected wave as it propagates. It's a bit ugly to see there. This is an animation. Um, <clears throat> I have a, another YouTube video to kind of maybe help see that. This is in, uh, what we would have probably done in class. Uh, someone else did this somewhere else in the world and put a YouTube video up. So he creates a pulse that's going to the right, so just a short little wave burst, and he's fixed it at the very end. And maybe I'll just stop talking and show it to you. So as you can see that when he creates that pulse, the end is fixed. And so therefore the, we'll call to the right a crest, to the left we'll call it a trough. Um, <clears throat> and we'll get to that loose end in a minute. I'll just go back a little bit. So in real life, the crest initially sent will reflect as a trough as it reaches this end that's fixed and not free to move. And so that's just some very basic waveform interaction. And as you saw, as this goes back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, the amplitude does get smaller in reality because it's interacting with the atmosphere around it, the atmosphere can remove energy from the wave. So it will dissipate and dampen after a while, um, but for now, just don't worry about that. Uh, we're gonna assume it's perfect. When we do our math, when we do our general talks of physics, and therefore it doesn't actually uh, decrease. So, back to this one. So what happens when it gets to the boundary? This is what I'd kind of make you do it in class, just sort of have a, obviously you don't have animations on your paper, but this is what I'd more or less make you write down in the classroom. Uh, you're watching this in the video. So basically if you have a crest going towards this boundary that's not free to move, it would reflect back in the exact opposite direction. Uh, the amplitude going up should match the amplitude going down. So your fixed end reflection, which is what this is called, your amplitude, uh, your wavelength, and your speed and frequency should all remain the same. The only thing that's changed is the orientation of the amplitude. This was positive one, now I have negative one, as it reflects as a trough. So again, I'm just sending pulses. Uh, obviously a trough would be after this wave if it was a complete wavelength, but uh, if you just see half the wave, that should be good enough for your general idea. So if I sent a crest, then a trough, it would reflect as a trough, then a crest. So, yeah. So the other kind of um, <clears throat> reflection is known as free end reflection. So free end reflection, let's get rid of those components. Free end reflection means that this little point here of the string is literally free to move. Right? It is not fixed in place. It can move up and down as, as it goes back and forth. So the exact same crest is being sent to this end that is now free to move. And you'll see that upon reflection, the orientation is not going to be inverted. So when it reflects, it just goes back to where it came from. A crest reflects as a crest. If this had a trough involved, then the trough would reflect as a trough. So the orientation of the wave will not change. So crest reflects as a crest. If I put on the components, you can see what happens. So you end up, just pause it. So the reflected wave again is red. The original wave is white. 
So what happens, these two amplitudes actually add together. And in this case, your wave doubles up. So it's going to be double the amplitude at this, roughly at this exact point while it's reflecting. So you have a little bit of uh, overlap of your two waves. Okay, and you will see that in the video. I paused this one. So he now has a loose end here. He's got it attached to a rope. Um, so it's more free to move. This ties into uh, going from one medium to another, but we'll get to that shortly. So when he creates the pulse this time, since that end is free to move, it comes back as a crest. Right? But when he gets back to his hand, because he's holding that slinky, that spring, oh, that's back to fixed end, let's go back. So because he's holding this thing rigid, the crest is going to reflect back as a crest, but because he's holding this thing very solid, it's gonna be fixed end reflection. That's why you see it come back, reflect as a trough when it gets back to him. So fixed end reflection, you have an inversion of your amplitude. There it is in slow motion. You can see it happening in the video. A free end reflection should keep crest as a crest. There's fixed end right there. And then free end trough as a trough. Right, so. <clears throat> animation wise. <clears throat> oh, that's the wrong one. Ah, whatever, let's go back to it. So, <clears throat> oopsie, sorry about that. I'm not gonna re-record this video. So again, if you're in the class, <clears throat> your free end reflection would look like this. If I'd made you write it down from the smart board. Any crest that's traveling across uh, the page to the right, uh, and this is free to move, is just gonna reflect back as a crest. Uh, all properties aside from the direction uh, of the wave should remain the same. The wavelength should stay the same. The amplitude should stay the same. Uh, the speed itself, because the medium hasn't changed, should it stay the same. And frequency should frequency should always remain the same. Once a wave is created, you cannot actually change the frequency, but we'll get to that later. So in this kind of reflection, all those things should remain the same. The only thing that will change is the direction that the wave is propagated, and it's not inverted. So <clears throat> next, as you probably saw from the animation page, is what happens when you go from one medium into another. Um, what happens if your material is not uh, consistent? That's when you start to get things known as partial reflection. Some of the wave is gonna propagate through, some of the wave is going to reflect back. Uh, but the main thing you really have to wrap your head around is the frequency is not allowed to change. The speed can change, the wavelength can change, but the frequency once a wave is created cannot change. If you want the frequency to change, you have to change it at the source creating the wave. So, um, when you get to partial reflection, some of the wave energy is transmitted to the new material, some of the wave energy is reflected back. <clears throat> Animation wise, oops, drop down bar, there we go. So here it is, first off, just with an animation. Our original wave is traveling from left to right. So <clears throat> we're going from a thin material to a thicker material. Why don't you turn the components off just so you can see it real time. So this material is a faster material. Waves can propagate through this material pretty quickly. This here is a uh, thicker material, so waves have a harder time propagating through it. So sometimes it's due to its density, sometimes it's uh, due to if it's a spring, how tightly packed the coils are or the materials that it's made out of. So there's lots of different factors that can create a fast wave versus a slow wave. Plus it'll also depend on what kind of wave we're talking about. So when we get to this boundary here, make note of how large that amplitude is when you have a fast medium attached to a slow medium. The wave that is propagated through, the wave that transmits into the new medium is quite a bit smaller in wavelength size. So that's the left to right size of the wave, right? It's quite a bit narrower, right? 
the wavelength itself, or sorry, the amplitude itself also shrinks. So that is partly due to the fact that this material has a harder time moving. It's harder to move this material. Um, so that could be the difference between, uh, say, uh, water and crude oil. Crude oil is a lot uh, thicker of material and therefore waves wouldn't propagate, uh, wouldn't be able to move as quickly. Um, or think of it in terms of um, uh, a wood versus a brick wall. Right? Wood would be a lot softer and brick would be a lot harder to move if, if you want to think of it in that regard. So as it travels back and forth. So the reflected wave, so you have a large amplitude. Now you got a small amplitude because uh, it had to share some of its energy with the transmitted wave. The reflected wave itself is going to have a much smaller amplitude than before. It is inverted but the wavelength itself should remain the same as it originally was, right? So you can visualize how long that is. It's about the same length. Should be exactly the same length. I'm gonna say about because I'm not measuring it, right? So if we look at the components, you can see it happening in real time as it propagates into the new material. If you go in the opposite direction, so now we're traveling from the thick material to the thin material. So this is the slow material, this is the fast material. So when the opposite happens, so notice the amplitude gets bigger, so it has an easier time moving. So you can think of this as a spring attached to a string, like in the, one of the previous animations. Um, the amplitude actually gets a lot larger. So this material is easier to move, so it's easier to disturb. It's going to move a lot uh, more freely, if you will. So therefore, the amplitude actually increases. The wavelength itself, as you can see, this wavelength is quite a bit larger than the original wave. So the original wave was there, right? It wasn't too big, about half the half of its screen. Right? So it's actual screen size there, half of its screen. As it gets in the new material, the wavelength itself is now the full screen. So the wavelength gets a lot bigger because again, this material has an easier time. Uh, it's, it's easier to move this material. Uh, whereas what's happening here upon reflection, it's going to reflect like a free end. So this transmission is going to behave like a free end reflection. So this will propagate through and transmit it through. And this will reflect back as though it was a free end reflection. So make note the amplitude does decrease because it has to share some of its energy with whatever wave has traveled through. Think of it in terms of sound trying to go through the door. You can hear sound on the other side uh, of the door. <clears throat> it's gonna be a lot quieter than on the side where the, the music is blasting nice and loud. Some of it will propagate through in terms of that. Um, uh, so it has to share some of that energy. Maybe it was a bad analogy, but that's what I went with. Okay, so classroom wise, <clears throat> so there's just another little animation. Um, classroom wise, this is probably what I make you guys write down in your books. You can press pause if you want. I'll try to go through this quickly. When you're going from a low dense material to a high dense material, as far as wave propagation is concerned, so whatever incident wave is, so it has one initial speed, the reflected speed will be the exact same. So I've got V1 there, I've got V2, a V1 there. Uh, it's just going in the exact opposite direction. So as far as what gets reflected, the wavelength, the speed, and the frequency should stay the same, and the amplitude should get a little bit smaller. So I just hand drew this here. So this amplitude is a little bit shorter than this amplitude there. Uh, and that's one of the properties of the reflected wave in this case. The transmitted wave into the slower material should have a uh, shorter wavelength. I think I drew that a little bit shorter. Maybe not as uh, obvious, but that should be a little bit smaller. So your wavelength should decrease in size. Your speed, so this is a slower medium, higher density, harder to move. So of course that will slow down quite a bit. Uh, the frequency, once a wave is created, the frequency cannot change. So that's the one thing that will always stay the same. It's just gonna look different because this one has a slower speed. The wavelength also has to decrease. So those two are related. And of course, the amplitude in this case is gonna be smaller because uh, this material is harder to move. 
So when you're going from a uh, low dense material to, uh, to a high dense material or a fast material to a slow material, uh, it's going to, the reflected wave will behave like a fixed end reflection. You have an inversion. Um, <clears throat> likewise, in that other animation, if you flip that around, if you create the wave in a uh, 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 denser material, a high density material, a slower moving material, when it goes to the fast moving material, it's easier to make the wave form move and therefore uh, disturb the material. So therefore you're going to see a larger uh, amplitude and size. And in the classroom, I kind of make you guys write this down in your notes, um, just so you have it for yourself. So as far as this scenario is concerned, the reflected wave is going to behave like a free end reflection. And that's what the one video had, the one little demonstration video had, where it was trying to show you a free end reflection. Uh, the fellow who made the video just attached the, the, the spring that he was using to a string. Um, <clears throat> and the string was giving you that uh, illusion that it was free to move. But really what he was doing was showing this scenario where you're going from a slow material to a faster material and he was able to get free end reflection. So as far as wave properties are concerned, again, I just drew this in by hand so I can't guarantee how accurate I was. Your wavelength should still remain the same speed because this material the reflected wave is the same as the original material it's going to have a fixed speed the speed can't change within the same material and the frequency once a wave is created will always remain the same but again because that to share some of its energy this amplitude should decrease uh, likewise for the uh, wave that got transmitted into the fast material the frequency should always remain the same because this is an easier material to manipulate your wavelength is going to get bigger, so this should at least visually look a little bit wider uh, across. Your speed is going to increase, so it's going to speed up quite a bit, uh, and your amplitude should increase because it's easier to move the stuff around. So that's when you're going from a uh, one material to another, so the two different scenarios. Now this is just a one-dimension problem where you can only go forwards or backwards. Uh, when we get into two dimensions in a little while, that'll be known as uh, refraction. And when you have a refraction, you could change the direction into the, the y-axis. If this is traveling on the x-axis, refraction can change a wave into the y-axis and it will go off instead of going straight to the right, it might go off down uh, to the right or up to the right, depends on what the scenario is. But the main thing that you need to recognize is when a wave propagates from one material to a new material, the frequency cannot change. So you might see that in another lesson coming up with your universal wave equation. So just try to remember that when you go from one medium to another, the frequency cannot change. The speed can change, the wavelength can change, but the frequency cannot. Um, I think I'm going to stop that video. Oh wait, I'm gonna do one more uh, animation that I forgot to show you. Um, so this is kind of the real life. I have this material in my classroom, but this is a different uh, person who did this SMU physics, if you want to see that. Oh, I should probably give props to the other guy. Uh, this guy was an XM Demo 138. So XM Demo, he made this video, it was very nice. Um, so this is what it would look like in real life when you go from one material to another. I'll stop talking. A little bit grainy, potato quality. Crest propagates as a crest but it lost some of its amplitude to this material here. So this is like a fixed end reflection. I know it's like a fixed end reflection because it reflected backwards. Um, I think this one I'll save for later. Okay, well, I hope that was useful to you. Uh, I'll stop the recording here. If you have any questions, as always, just send me an email.